Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Everyday Sunday show, uh, Sunday with Pastor Thomas. I am very elated and even delighted to be part of you today. In case you are just joining us, I want you to know that you are on Radio Bulamasti and Shana TV, a place to be. And um, it's a good choice to make to be on Radio Bulamasti. So today, without further ado, we are going to talk about the things of the Spirit, the stuff of the Spirit. And before I do that, I would like to commit this hour into the hands of God and pray that uh, the Spirit of the Most High God will communicate with you and with me and that at the end of this program, you will have a good understanding of the topic under study. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the gift of life. We want to thank you for the air that we breathe it is lord your gift it is not an entitlement it is your free and gracious gift and we want to give you all the honor and the praise lord for counting us worthy to be in the land of the living today we know that millions of people have passed not because they were worst sinners than we are but god it is your grace that have sustained us so far and we want to return the praise the glory and the honor to you for being so kind and so merciful towards us and towards our loved ones we want to commit this program into your hands and we want to pray that lord you will speak to our soul and to our spirit that at the end of this program we will be heavily edified and our spirit will be lifted up to the glory of god the father thank you lord in the most precious name of jesus amen ladies and gentlemen just like i said today we are going to talk about the things of the spirit and the topic that i want to deal with is walking in the spirit walking in the spirit what does it mean exactly to walk in the spirit and i know that some of you have heard this expression before either uh, in a church or in a temple or even in the streets i know many of you who are interested in spiritual things will be interested in this topic today so walking in the spirit what does that mean and what is the opposite of walking in the spirit quickly i want to take you to the ancient book the ancient book i call the the bible in the book of galatian galatian chapter 5 from verse 22 so I would like you to bear with me while I am opening my Bible in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. And if need be, we are going to read the verses that follows verse 16. So yes, I am, I am there, Galatians chapter 5 verse 14. Let me start from verse 14 actually. This is an epistle that was written by Paul, the beloved apostle, the apostle of the Gentile. And he says in verse 14, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In verse 16, he says, But I say, walk by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are plain, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warned you as I warned you before 
that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desire. Verse 25, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to break down what we just read. In verse 14, Paul gives a command to the Galatians and all those who are born again, children of God. He says, walk in the Spirit. Actually, it's verse 16. He said, but I say, walk by the Spirit. Some versions or some translations say, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit and do not gratify the desire of the flesh. Now, here we see a kind of... Um, Opposition between two concepts, on the one hand, walking in the spirit, and on the other hand, walking in the flesh. And again, someone might ask me, Pastor Thomas, what does it mean to walk in the spirit? And what does it mean to walk in the flesh? You know, the word walk here is a metaphor for our daily living with the Holy Spirit. From the time you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you start a journey with your Lord. It is a journey, and it is a lifelong journey. Nobody knows for how long that journey will obtain. It might be a two-week journey. It might be a one-day journey. It might be a 10 years journey, or it might even be a lifetime journey, as I said earlier. So once you give your life to Jesus, a journey has started. And metaphorically, God calls that journey a walk with God. And here Paul calls it a walk with the Spirit. And he says, walk by the Spirit or walk in the Spirit and do not gratify the works of the flesh. So what we understand by this is that there are two powers that are polar opposed and that are trying to have control over you. On the one hand, you have the power of God represented by the Spirit of God that indwells you. And on the other hand, you have the power of the flesh represented by its desires, which are not always godly desires. And Paul gave a listing of all the desires of the flesh. One of them is immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and all the like. These are the works of the spirit. I mean, the works of the flesh. These are the things that the flesh delights in. These are the things that the flesh wants to indulge in because it feels good. But most of the time, things that feel good are not always godly. Something might be good, but not godly. And we need to be careful not to indulge in things that are good, but not godly. Now, back to what I was talking about, the walking in the Spirit or walking by the Spirit. What is it exactly? It is a daily life of surrender. When you as a born again child of God, you learn to surrender, you learn to yield to the Spirit. The Spirit will have control over your desires. But when you fail to allow the Spirit to take over, the 
flesh and its desire will have control over you. And this is an ongoing battle. This is an ongoing war that is never ending. It is never ending. Have you ever wondered how contrastive feelings and constructive emotion can abide within you, inside you, side by side, almost inseparable? And this is something which is a, a, a mystery. How two things that are opposite can abide in you? How two feelings, how two emotions that are very paradoxical, very contrastive, very polar opposed, can abide within the same heart? This is a battle, and some people call it the battle of the mind or the battle of the heart. It is an inner battle. It is an inner battle. I, I, I read a story uh, somewhere of um, an, a wise man, a very wise man, uh, who had a conversation with his grandson. And his grandson was wondering why uh, sometimes he have noble feelings or noble thoughts and the next meaning, he has completely different thoughts. And he kept wondering, why is it so? Why is this taking place? And the old wise man replied in a very brilliant way. He said to him, son, listen, there are two wolves that are battling within you. There are invisible wolves. You have one that is good and the other one is the bad guy and they are constantly battling. And the little boy asked his grandfather, since they are constantly battling, what will be the end? Who is going to win? Which wolf is going to have the upper hand at the end of the day. And the brilliant wise man answered, the one that you feed is the one that is going to win. The wolf that you feed is the one that is going to win. In other way around, the outcome of the battle will depend on which type of spirit you feed. Are you feeding the spirit of God or are you feeding the evil spirit? Only you can answer this question. But if you choose to feed the Holy Spirit that lives in you, you will find yourself victorious over the desires of the flesh because you will give so much strength to the Holy Spirit to fight for you because you feed him. And how do you do that? You do that by constantly reading the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1, be ye not conformed to the pattern of the, this present world but be renewed in your mind. Again, this word mind is coming again. Remember, I told you about the battle of the mind. There is an ongoing battle going in your mind. And that is the most important battle in your life ever. And again, the wolf that you feed is the wolf that is going to win. In Proverbs chapter for verse 23, the wise man Solomon gave a piece of advice to all believers in the world. He said, guard your hearts more than anything, for out of it flow the issues of life. Guard your heart more than anything, for out of it flow the issues of life. In other way around, you need to watch over what goes into your heart. You need to watch over what goes into your mind. By the way, the heart and the mind in the Jewish 
tradition are considered one and the same thing. No difference. No difference. The heart is often designated as the mind and this vice versa. These two words can be used interchangeably. And he says, guard your mind more than anything or guard your heart more than anything because it is inside your heart that the most important thinking takes place. It is in your heart that the most important decisions are made. It is in your heart that all kinds of stuff take place. And that is why you don't want to mess with what goes in there. How do you guard your heart? How do you guard your mind from the pollution of this world? We know that we have five senses, five organs of senses. And those senses are a gateway to our spirit. They are a gateway to our soul. They are a gateway to our mind. The things that we see are a gateway. The eyes are a gateway. The things that we we'll see will go and take refuge in our mind. Sometimes they will go and cross the subconscious barrier and lodge in there. The things that we hear, the things that we touch, and the words that we say, the words that we speak, all these things are a gateway to our soul. And the things that we smell are a gateway. Information passes through your organs of senses to take refuge into your heart. And you need to filter what kinds of information goes into your heart. If there are good things, your heart will be healthy. But if there are terrible stuff, your heart will be polluted. And when your heart is polluted, you are in big danger, you are in big trouble. We all know the story of a great king called David in the Bible. The Bible called him, the, God called him, the man after my heart. But one day, as David was walking on the deck of his palace in the, in the cool of the evening, his eyes went in a direction that was not desirable. He w saw a lady by the name Bathsheba taking her bath and immediately the spirit of David was polluted. His soul was polluted and he started fantasizing he couldn't sleep all night long. He was fantasizing on how he could lay a hold on Bathsheba, who happened to be Uriah's wife. Now, instead of David to resist that thought, he started nursing it. He started nursing it. He started toying with evil thinking, evil thoughts. And we know how at the end this thing landed him into a big trouble and it took years for David to recover from his sin. The first thing we know is David needed to get rid of Urias, who was Bathsheba's husband because Uriah was a, an obstacle on his way. So he had him killed, and then the way was open for him to grab Bathsheba. And he committed adultery with Bathsheba, and the Lord sent prophet Nathan to let him know about what he did in the secret. We all see how 
the eyes and the things that we see can land us into trouble. And that is why we need to filter what we see, what we watch on the television, on the internet. And I know that today the internet is infected with all kinds of pictures and images that can cause addictions of all kinds. And it is unfortunate. But you need to control what goes into your mind. Because if you do not, your mind is going to put you into trouble. Again, let's come back to what Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Guard your heart more than anything, for out of it flow the issues of life. And Jesus said in the book of Matthew and even in the gospel of Mark that the problem of man is the heart. Because out of the heart come evil thinking. Out of the heart come all kinds of evil thoughts. Jealousy, envy, murder, stealing, covetousness, lust, pride. All these things are incubated in the heart. And that is why you need to watch over your heart. You need to watch over your heart more than anything because your heart should not be polluted. How do you watch over your heart? I just said it. Be careful, beware what you watch on the TV, on the internet. Be careful what you hear. And Jesus said it in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Be careful what you hear. And in another scripture, he said, be careful how you hear. Because the things that you hear can pollute your spirit. And be careful what you speak. We know what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21. Life and death are on the power of the tongue. Whatever you speak might happen. Whatever you confess might pursue you. If you speak life, you will live. But if you speak defeat, you will be defeated. If you speak misfortune, you will encounter misfortune. If you speak sickness, you will be sick. If you speak success, you will be successful. Whatever you speak, Whatever you confess, whatever comes out of your mouth can have serious consequences on your life and your future. And that is why you should be aware, you should be careful not to speak in a very flippant way or in a very joking way. You don't speak jokingly. And even if you want to make jokes, you should know what kind of jokes you make because even jokes can be used against you in the spirit realm. We all know that even in the natural realm, we have the right to be silent. We all know that at the time of a police arrest, the police officer will remind you of the Miranda right that were enacted in 1964. You have the right to be silent because whatever you will say can be used against you. The same applies in the spirit realm. Whatever you say can be used against you. Demon can use it against you. Witchcraft powers can use it against you. Evil spirits can use it against you. So if you have nothing good to say about yourself, I would advise you to just hold your peace. You don't have to talk. You don't talk because you want to say something. You talk because you have something to say. There's a big difference. Some people talk just because they want to say something. You don't have to. You don't have to. You need to be a man of few words. You need to be a woman of few words. Because the more you speak, the more you multiply words, 
the more your words can be used against you. So let your words be few and know how to choose your words. Before you say anything, always ask yourself, is it needful? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Does it edify? Does it build up? Does it encourage those that are listening to me? Life is not a joke. Life is spiritual. And it is those who draw closer to God and who yield to the leading of the Spirit that are going to make it. Because we live in a world that is infested with evil. And how do you navigate through all this evil? It is only by yielding to the Spirit of God. And Paul says it, walk in the Spirit or walk by the Spirit. Now, there is a scripture that throws light to this scripture that we just read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. And we all know that uh, scripture interprets scripture. Let us read another scripture that brings more explanation to what Paul said. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. The Bible says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. It is those that are led by the Spirit. It is not those who profess to be sons and daughters of God, but it is those who are led by the Spirit. Again, you see the importance of being led by the Spirit. The truth of the matter is that nobody leads themselves. You are either led by the Holy Spirit or you are led by the evil spirit or by the flesh. There is no other way about it. You are either led by the Holy Spirit or you are led by the flesh. And this is the contrast that Paul made in Galatians 5, 5 uh, 16 that we, we read at the beginning of this sermon. So this is a very, very sure, sure word and is something to be taken seriously. And we need to think it over. We need to think it over because the battle of the mind is real. The battle of the mind is not a joke. The battle of the mind will determine the outcome of everything that you do. We all know that as human beings, we are made of three elements. We are a tripartite being, a body, a spirit, and a soul. But the real you is not your body. The real you is your spirit. The real you is your spirit. You are a spirit being living in a body. You live in a frame. You live in a cubicle that is called body. Your body is just a bunch of dirt. It is not the real you. The real you is your spirit. You are a spirit and you have a soul and you live in a body. And we know that the soul itself is like the mediator between the spirit and the body. And we know that the day you became a born again child of God, it wasn't your flesh that was born again or your body, but it was your spirit that got born again. So your spirit is already born again, but your soul is not yet born again. Your soul is being born again as you surrender daily to the leading and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So the salvation of the soul is an ongoing process. And your body is not yet born again. Your body will be born again or redeemed, let me put it that way, in the last days when Jesus will come to fetch the church, when Jesus will come to rapture his sheep, that day, the corruptible body, as Paul calls it, will put on incorruptibility. Your corruptible body will become incorruptible. And that, was, that would be the day you, your body will be redeemed. But for now, 
your body is not yet redeemed. And because your body is not yet redeemed, you are liable or subject to trouble because the desires of your body are polar opposed to the desire of the real you, the spirit. And we know that between the spirit and the soul, we have a mediator that is the soul. And the soul itself is a composition of three elements. Your will, your mind, and your emotions. Again, your soul is comprised of your will, your mind, and your emotions. And the most important part of your soul is your mind. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, as a woman thinks in her heart, so are they. You are the product of your thinking. You are the product of your mind. Your body is just a little detail. Somebody might be tall and not have a big mind. Somebody might be short and have a big mind. So the size of your body does not reflect the size of your mind because you are your mind. If you are big, a man of big thinking, you will have a big mind even if you live in a small body. And that is why you need to be careful what goes into your mind because it is the seat of your emotion, because it is the seat of your thinking. Just like I said, it is where everything is incubated. You have a will and God respects your will. God has given you the free will to either choose him or reject him. So it's up to you. And he will never get you to do something against your will. But nevertheless, God wants you to surrender your will to his will. Because his will is better than yours. But the problem is that we are not ready, or some of us are not ready to surrender our will to the will of God. And we know how important it is for a child of God to surrender their will to the will of God. We remember the Lord's prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. He said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is important to surrender your will to the will of God, because the will of God is perfect. And sometimes we don't want God's will to obtain. We want our will to obtain as spoil little brats or spoil little children who always want to have their way. And not many people are really ready to yield or surrender their will to the will of God because they still hold tight onto certain things which will take them nowhere. Most people don't believe in God, not, just, not because God doesn't make sense, but they don't just want God to be in control of their life. They don't just want God to be in charge because they know that from the minute they believe in God, it means God is in charge. And not many people cherish that idea of having a supreme being being in charge of their life or being in control. Many people want to control themselves. And this is part of our North American culture that promotes the self, the ego, our individuality. We have a big sense of entitlement. It's my life. It's my body. I have the right to do whatever I want with my body or with my life. But you forget that you did not create yourself. Somebody created you. Somebody sent you into this world. When you were still a little egg in your mother's womb, 
you did not know anything about what you would be. You did not know you are left from your right. You were nothing, just a tiny little egg. But the Almighty watched upon you, and he developed you in your mom's womb day by day, week by week, month by month, until you were born. He gave you eyes. He gave you ears. He gave you the wisdom and the beauty that you possess. He gave you gifts. He gave you talents. He gave you all kinds of uh, good things for his glory not for your personal gratification not for the satisfaction of the desires of your flesh think about it I'm not here to ask you to do something which is outrageous I'm just here to remind you that as a born again child of God you need to surrender your will, your emotions, and your mind to the will of God. And we know that the soul is the most stubborn part of our being. And because the soul is so stubborn, we often have a hard time yielding to the spirit. And we know that the flesh is one of the allies of the enemy, one of the allies of the devil. And that is why we need to learn to subdue the flesh. We need to learn to put it under control so that it doesn't get us to do things that do not bring glory to God. Dear listener, I want to encourage you to draw closer to God. I want to encourage you to find, to discover, find and discover your purpose in life. What is your purpose in life? Have you ever asked yourself, why am I here? Where do I come from? Where am I going after this life? These are the big questions of life. And the answer to all these questions are not in philosophy books because these questions have generated tons and tons of books, volumes and volumes of books, and they have never been answered. And philosophy doesn't answer questions. Instead, philosophy raises more questions. Just like we know what the German philosopher Karl Jasper said, in philosophy, questions are more important than answers. And even when Answers are provided, they turn into new questions. But the Bible gives us an answer, if not answers to all these great questions of life. The Bible tells us where we came from. The Bible tells us why we are here. And the Bible tells us where we are going. And the Bible tells us that we can choose to have a glorious end, a glorious transition into God's eternity. Or we can choose to spend eternity far away from God. Think about your life. Think about eternity. You might keep gratifying the lust and the desires of your flesh, but I don't know for how long you will do that. Some people have indulged in this kind of philosophy, a donistic philosophy, or the Epicurean philosophy of pleasures, and they found themselves into deep pain. Some of them got addicted to all kinds of things. Crack cocaine, addicted to sex, addicted to pornography, addicted to phones, addicted to gambling addicted to all kinds of terrible things. It all started with an attempt to satisfy the desires of the flesh. But all these things are traps and snares because there is nothing good in the flesh. Unless you subdue your flesh and you put it under control, your flesh will only bring trouble upon trouble. 
I don't say that I am an enemy of pleasure. God is not an enemy of pleasure, neither am I. But God wants you to use your flesh appropriately. He wants you to use your flesh in a way that is glorifying to Him. He wants you to use your flesh in a way that there will be no aftermath or effects, destructive effects on your flesh. So I want to stop here and I want to pray for you. I believe that what I just said is food for thought. And I want you to think about it. Think it over. Think about your life. Think about eternity. You may want to say, Pastor, I have heard your sermon and it touches my heart. What should I do in order to come out of this mess? I have been pursuing pleasure for many years and what did I find? I found pain. And if this applies to you, and you want to say, Pastor, what do I do to come out of this evil cycle? I will tell you, the only thing that you can do that can bring a 360 degree change in your life is to yield to Jesus. To acknowledge that you are a sinner, admit that you can't help yourself, but only Jesus can, and invite him. Tell him to come into your heart and to change it and to transform it, and he will. He will because he did it for me. I remember as a teenager, I was exposed to pornography. And it became a vicious cycle in my life. I attempted by all means, using human methods and human skills and techniques and strategies to free myself from the entanglement of that spirit. But I did not succeed. All I did was vain attempt to free myself but one day, I went to God in prayer and in fasting, and I sh poured my heart to him. I shed tears, and I said, God, I know I can't, I can't continue this way. I need your help. And then I realized that only Jesus could help me. And he came, and he broke the chains of pornography in my life, and he set me free. He did it for me. He did it for hundreds and thousands and millions of people all over the world. He can do it for you today. All you need to do is to surrender to Jesus. And Jesus will break the power of sin in your life. So if you want to make peace with God and be in good standing, in right standing with your maker, your creator, all I would ask you to do is to repeat this prayer after me. And when you repeat it, just repeat it as a recitation or as a parrot that is mimicking everything that he hears. But repeat it as if you were the author of those words, as if they were coming from your heart. And indeed, they should come from your heart because the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus christ and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you shall be saved it is as simple as that it is so simple yet the most powerful decision that a human being can take in the course of their life so i want you to repeat this word after me Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive my sin. Forgive my wrongdoings, 
my trespasses, my offenses. Forgive anything that I have done from the beginning till today. Come into my heart. Break the power of sin and addiction in me. Turn my heart. Transform it into a new heart. Thank you, Lord. I believe that from today, I am saved. I am a born again child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me, I uh, would first start by saying congratulations. Just like I said before, this is the most important decision that a human being can take in their life because it will determine where you will spend eternity. And if you have sincerely prayed this prayer, I want you to know that today begins your journey with God. Today begins your walk with the Spirit. And I want you to come closer to God. How would you do that? Through His Word. Through His Word. This is the Holy Bible. Get one. If you don't have one, go to any church around you and they will give you one. Start reading it from the Gospel of John. Read it daily. And as you read it, know that you are reading the Word of God. You are reading the mind of God. And obey everything that it tells you to do. And refrain from going back to your former life of sinfulness. Look for a Bible-believing church and join them either on the internet or in person or just get in touch with Shana TV or Radio Bulamasti and say I have listened to the sermon of Pastor Thorman I want to meet him I want him to counsel me and to help me in my new journey with God and I will be so delighted to have you as my new friend. God bless you. I want to pray for all of you. Heavenly Father, I thank you because you said that your word is like the rain that falls down. It cannot return to the sky without fulfilling the purpose why it was sent. Father, your word has been spoken today, and I believe that the Holy Spirit of God is using it to instruct, to teach, to correct, to rebuke, to transform all those that are listening and all those that will listen to it in the weeks and the months and the years to come. Lord, I pray that you bless your word. Your word carries power. And the power that is in your word has never changed. It remains, oh, the greatest dunamis power ever. Thank you, Father. I bless all the hearers and the listeners. And I pray that the angel of the Lord will be released wherever they are right now to give them the assistance that they need. Some of them need deliverance from one addiction or the other. Others need healing. Other needs, oh God, guidance. Other needs clarity of thought. Others are confused and they need, oh God, Father, that their confusion be taken away. Lord, as our faces are different so are our needs and i pray that god as many that believe in you god that a miracle will take place that you will meet them to the point of your need in the name of jesus i pray for this radio and this tv radio bulamasti and shana tv that you will bless all 
all those who are running this radio program, this radio Oh God station, that God this station will continue to be a channel for blessing, a channel of benediction for our community and for all the people in the world. In the name of Jesus. Father, I commit my humble self before you. I surrender, O oh God, to you. And I pray that you shield me, God, with your presence. Even as I leave this place right now, I'm not leaving your presence. Shield me with your presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, dear listener. It is always a great honor for me to bring the word of God to you. Please feel free to touch base with me and to let me know uh, if you were blessed. If you were not blessed, I hope that next time you are going to be blessed. God bless you and um, see you uh, next time. Shalom.